All right, let's get this highlight underway to start the week. We're opening up 12 lower. So you're naturally going to get people in the market, more bearish coming in, and that's fine. But when you open up and within a minute you jump like we did in here, what we talked about was, hey, this gets people who come in over 50% bearish, stuck and wrong. You got to be able to put on your horns and change your mind. Where is there going to be a pullback where you might be able to find an opportunity to get on the upside being the right side? Now, let me play this, and you're going to be able to see, but also hear some selling come in, like right in here. Let me stop it. When you hear a male voice, that's buying coming in. When you're a female voice, that's selling coming in. Now, let's just play it because that's playing too fast. Slow it down a bit. Um, you had seen, maybe was too fast, you didn't hear selling come in right in here. As soon as it gets above it, it's a moment where the pullback might be met with some buying. But right in here, I think was the um, additional selling coming in, can't go down, and so we pop. I think you heard 70 quarters. And it doesn't even attempt to go lower, all right? Let me pause it again. Too even, doesn't even attempt to go lower. Now, this was a little bit further away. But these 70 quarters weren't. Let me rewind it a minute. I'm going to go one more minute. Well, you've seen it flash red. Sometimes when it's playing back at a higher speed, the sound won't come in. But you see it flash red and then take off higher here at these 70 quarters. Point is, you have to, let's pause this a second. You have to build up what you're looking to do. That's a terrible uh, shade here, hold on. Based on just building blocks. Do you have to have 100 building blocks to put on a trade? You'll never trade. But the bias of the market coming in bearish and we could not go down and in fact jumped maybe in a probability sense, had some people, the overall market, stuck short, thinking short. Find the obvious and do the opposite. But that in and of itself isn't going to make you money. you got to put another layer on top of that, like in this case, some order flow after a pullback. See, this isn't just order. I'm reading order flow. I don't know what people mean when they say that. You have to get down into the weeds a little bit. What, can, what do you mean you're reading order flow? Well, I see sellers come in and can't go down. Okay, now we're talking. That's order flow. But when you're able to also say after a pullback, this is a pullback to potential support, whether it's this white VWAP, if it's this open, if it's this green support, whatever, you're finding a pullback to potentially get long to implement the bias that you created that the upside could be the right side because the market opened up weak and we shot up and you might have some stuck shorts. Then you're looking for a pullback. Then you're looking for stuck shorts. Whether it's the edge zone audio that I have, aggressive selling coming in, Hey, that's great. If aggressive selling comes in and it goes down, it was supposed to. If aggressive selling comes in and it doesn't go down, that's a clue that you might be able to get the pop. And that's where our reads, my read comes from in real time to say, you know, that's an upside. That's some upside. She's getting embarrassed. I say she because a female voice represents aggressive selling. All right. So now let's go on. We stop that. And throughout the session, let me open this up. Whatever your opinion is, doesn't last forever. Only if it's an uptrend day where we open up, rally, and we keep going up and close on the highs. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen a lot. Almost never happens. So you always have to have the ability to change your opinion for objective reasons. You're not changing your opinion from bullish to bearish because you're short, but because the market is telling you something that you're able to read and pick up 
in real time and objective, objectively. So 8.30 is in here. This is their first jump we're talking about, right? Here's the first pullback that gets a rally. Here's a sell-off where we had talked about, and this is about reading news. This sell-off came down because Trump tweeted something about China and China trade, but the algorithms took it down because they pieced the words out of the tweet to mean something bearish. He had tweeted about China or trade in a long time. We talked about that. That This was just something that got the market cheap. Didn't know that right there, but we started to read that in here because, you know what? This went down. It wasn't a coincidence because of those tweets about China, about trade, but it was a vanilla tweet. It wasn't anything bearish. It wasn't anything controversial or confrontational. That's important to read because then there's more upside. Then we had this really odd, long box where there were head fakes to go down, then go up, to go up, and then come down. What was important was the middle of the box. I was bullish and, in fact, long up here. But I wasn't still bullish here or here or here. It was right through the middle of this box, along with right above there, it was Dave who mentioned that the Russell, the Russell, which was strong, got hit and weakened up. The bond market, the gold market, the yen markets caught a little bit of a bid. We're looking to go up, 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 and all of a sudden, these ancillaries turn, and then you drift hard through the middle of that box. These all are probabilities. It's not about being wrong. It's how long are you wrong for, and how much do you fall in love with your ideas or your trades, and what gets you to change that idea? You know, right in here. I didn't predict that we were going to go straight down, but I did say be careful long because at some point we're going to make a big move. You don't have to be on the team all the time. So not to go over the whole session, but just moments where it's okay to be wrong, how long you're wrong for. What gets you to say you're wrong? Because you're not going to be objective when you have a position on. You have a bias out there. Naturally, you're not going to be objective. So what's going to get you to be objective? That's what you got to work hard on or hard at. Um, there's one last thing I wanted to say about, about today. And that was, here's a good real time read. This is the Russell. Take a look what the Russell does right in here. This damn thing rallies and rallies a lot all the way to up here, right? In that rally, in that rally, the ES does this, <laughs> literally. It didn't go from here to here. It went from here to here, barely budged. And we're talking about that. It's like you had all the fuel to rally, including, no pun intended, oil gave you fuel at that point. It was in here. Oil generally moves in the same direction and influences the stock indexes because the XLE is an energy sector, the number two sector in the S&P. So it's going to influence the energy sector, which is going to in turn influence the S&P. So kind of a longer highlight as to what went on today, but just understand the step-by-step -step process, the progression to get you to find better locations. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel, I'm trying to get up above a thousand so we could do some live YouTube videos. Got to have over a thousand subscribers to do that. But good luck and manage your risk before you take it.